people moving this ahead. Um, I made this map, and I'm not sure if it, you can see it, but I had this idea of, you know, the whole company as an island, a uh, different set of islands, and you see somewhere the sysadmins trying to build a bridge to, you know, from production to development, and I was still thinking about, yes, we're, 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 you know, we're doing a good job as the admins, the DevOps people, to kind of like guide this bridge uh, between the two worlds, between non-production and production. And um, I think, you know, this, this kind of mental model many have, this is the bridge between the two worlds on DevOps. Um, I came up from, it, from the Agile side, so I was less about the cloud, Belgium is a small country, so we're, we don't do this big scaling thing like you do in the US. But I started applying more and more of these practices, even if it was like for five machines, I automated the stuff. But I was fascinated about people really like hammering on the tool set. So don't get me wrong, I'm, you know, I, I had my fair share of tools and playing around with the stuff. But, but it was really something that struck uh, to me, uh, you know, building those tools. And those were kind of the explosion years of a whole set of tools that kind of emerged, probably similar to what you've seen now in recent years of Kubernetes. But, uh, but yeah, like, you know, this actually, this title comes from a book, um, Women, Fire and Dangerous Things. Um, and it's kind of all the things that don't belong together in one sentence uh, that should be there. But more and more, I even did my own contribution, you know, giving a shout out to myself, it's weird. Uh, but I, I built like a project called Vivi, and this was a predecessor to some of you who might know Packer. And then I made the wrong decision when Mitchell asked me, do you want to like start a company together? I was like, no, I'm bored, like I've seen it, like, I'm not going to do this. So what are those like, bad inflection points? Uh, but you know, the tool was interesting. Agile was still my vibe, kind of collaborating with the teams uh, and working from there. So in 2012, I kind of started to like structure the thinking. What was really going on? Well, because we, before it was like, you know, hippie, happy together, we're doing this stuff, kumbaya, as uh, Damon Edwards would say. Um, but this was the first model I had uh, probably more in my head. So moving things to production, area one, getting uh, kind of extend the operations feedback to the project. So that's the first cycle. And then I had a third one, which more like the project knowledge. So not just the technology, but kind of impact on how you do things and not just what you do. And then giving the feedback uh, and the, the operation knowledge inside of the project. So how can we do these things better uh, in the project to do a better job at operating stuff. Um, we presented this at you know, yet another Velocity conference in London. I think maybe this was the inspiration uh, for Gene Kim to create like the three ways, but you know, he simplified it way. And this is like a, the, the nerdy version probably of this. Um, I also worked at that time um, in a company where it was already like, I shouldn't mention the word DevOps because it might give the wrong impression from being the kumbaya person and not being the tech person. So, you know, we were already like at that time, there was uh, some discussion about that. I came here and it's funny, everybody wants to hear the future of you. Uh, like what's next, what's next? And I keep saying it was an accident in 2009, so how can I know? And I always make the bad like decisions on what's gonna be next. But hey, it's good. If, you know, I might just take a crystal ball. And uh, at that time I made this map and I re I kind of uh, explained that DevOps, even at that time, we were saying, is it past, is it past, you know, 2013. Um, but I think the interesting part in my head was, I learned that the definition of a meme is a unit of cultural identity. And so whatever happens to DevOps, it doesn't matter. If it stays a meme somewhere, it's gonna be there. It's gonna be on and off, it's gonna come back and that is just gonna stay. For me, it was really rewarding to see, you know, the growth from somewhere in the middle of this area to, you know, all the way, like the Obama elections had a DevOps team, like, whoa, from, you know, me being tiny Belgian, kind of, this was a, an achievement, like what happened in this world. It wasn't my achievement, but it was kind of happening around the world. So, 
every company was actually asking like, you want to come for work for us? You want to come work for us? And I was like, nah, well, I kind of seen this DevOps thing. You know, I feel a fraud talking about DevOps and never really have done my own company. So I joined actually a startup and you can tell by the slide, it's, you know, the startup is completely different. You come in day one, they're just doing Git checkouts on the service of production. And this was for a prime time TV, no dime time, all the things. And it took me about two years to get this cycle going with five people I trusted, I worked daily up to a level. So I realized this was really, really hard. And then the complexity got even different. We were doing a lot of mobile stuff and we were like, oh, go faster, go faster, do it in real time, you know, deploy during the, uh, the episode of the show and then the app store. So I learned that there's the, these dependencies that even when you try to do your best, you're blocked by other parties. And this kind of led me to this other model. So up until now, I was focused like, Okay, Agile, Kumbaya, servers, managing itself. I learned there actually is a, a, another dimension. You're working with suppliers, you're working with a cloud vendor, you're working with a SaaS uh, provider, and you're building your service, but you're depending on that. And now it's, you know, there's a lot of dependencies. Your Kubernetes stack, your uh, your Node.js dependencies, and, and everything's becoming that dependency. And I think we haven't really figured out how to deal well with suppliers. Because it's all too easy to say work together in your own company, but you have no control of what's happening out there. So that was kind of an aha moment for me that, you know, if you want to work well with suppliers, you need to be friendly with them, you need to talk to them, you need to understand their tech, you need to kind of work with their parts as well. Uh, at that time, it was kind of probably dismissed and people looked at serverless is cool, serverless is cool. Uh, let me tell you, we wanted serverless and then Amazon said, you're not a good use case for serverless, so we're not gonna give you 10,000 concurrent users because it's not economically scalable. Okay, you know, there's the dream, there's the reality, all fine. And then this book, uh, Gene has been interviewing me for a while to write this book. I wrote nothing myself. They, they did all the writing. It took me two years to actually read it. Uh, but it's okay, right? You know, I guess the, what happened here in the community, uh, Gene had a good knack to bring this into the enterprise. And, and this kind of got the acceptance. And for me, it was funny, companies that in Belgium that were now asking me, do you want to do this DevOps thing that were, have been advocating for many years? They're like, okay, now you're asking me, I was there when you needed it, and okay. Um, but it's, it's good, like the acceptance is good. You don't need to defend it anymore. You can just point to a book, whether you agree or not, but at least there's something that you can refer to. Then 2009, you know, you, maybe I, I skipped a few years there, I made this slide and I was still working at that startup. It would think like, you know, I would know kind of how to do DevOps, collaborate with a small team, you know, collaborate with all the suppliers and do all this. But as kind of a aha moment was, well, you need to be working well with HR because in a startup hiring is one of the hard things but also with legal, you need to work with those people. And there's so many other facets in a business that make you a success that I think it's right to put DevOps in the right perspective and that we're not the savior of a company. So if, if people say, we're gonna do a digital transformation and DevOps is kind of the savior, it's, it's just, you know, what, what goes on in the other parts? Are they collaborating? And the insight is that if your bottleneck is not in your IT, again, you have no authority to kind of deal with the problem. So if they're not hiring the correct people, that is outside.
but it's part of doing good DevOps. It's part of reaching out to the salespeople, to the marketing people, that the tone is correct, that you're hiring the right people, and that is kind of expanding the view on what does a DevOps person do, uh, and not per se what you do in the tech part only. I decided to shut down the company, and basically because I felt that I was working too hard, too long, no revenue. So even though, even though I was think I was doing everything right by the book that we should be doing, there was no value I was creating, or not enough value I was creating. Then I kind of moved a little bit as a lifeline. Hey, there's this DevSecOps thing in New in time. Not really new, it was already in the handbook, but it kind of picked up traction. And they asked me, oh, you know, a thing or two about DevOps. So can you talk about this DevSecOps thing? And of course, there was no explosion of tools and, and so on. But uh, for me, the, the thing that resonated most was this book, The Thin Book of Trust. And it's really thin, right? But I think there's this saying, um, trust comes on foot and leaves on the horse, I think is a translation you would do here. Um, it takes a lot of time to build up the trust. And the, the four facets, sincerity, reliability, competence, and care, there's a lot of focus on competence. You know, can you do it well? What is your technical competence? But there isn't enough to build a trust across a team, across a supplier, across, you know, another part of the company. You need to be sincere and not just, you know, talk the talk or like whatever it expects you to do. You need to be sincere. You need to be reliable to be there every time they need you and not just say, well, you know, you can call us if you want. You know, be there together in the trenches, learn what they're failing and keep helping them. And all the other things, you can do whatever you want. If you don't care about them, you have no empathy about them, you can just dismiss all the other parts. So for me, this was kind of trust building is basically what we're doing. We're not realizing this to the full potential because we're so focused on competence and tech. But I think that's, that was the important part. So finally, after so many years, because people have been asking for a DevOps definition from day one. I always dismiss it like, who needs a definition? The Agile people had a short one. You know, it's not that useful anymore. The Agile people had like 15 books. Okay, so why bother writing it? Like, it's, it gets diluted anyway. Um, so this is kind of my definition after my model has changed. And I think that was it, is about reducing the friction between the silos. Not on the tech, not about a specific collaboration on that and the ops. Like, the collaboration in the silos could be anywhere in the company, any part externally, internally, and I think that's how I approach uh, DevOps these days. Um, another aha moment was when I was reading the book Reinventing Organizations, and you would see um, they, they kind of try to explain how the different cultures of an organization are built on. So you have command and control, you know, power-centric uh, view. Um, that's a little bit like the castles. You know, you build a castle, you can't get in, you can't get out, right? You, you know, medieval times. Then there's hierarchy, and I think automation. That's a little bit like the, you know, I don't know the English term, but kind of like the the, the factories and kind of emerging into the field. Uh, you know, we moved on and. We're doing this. Um, it brings order and stability. And then there's the scientific way. We should measure things uh, and you know have KPIs of all that stuff. Then there's the collaboration, right? The SaaS services, kind of that part, we're, we're providing you a service. And then evolutionary, I would think like we're in the stage of autonomy. Like we all want autonomous team, do whatever we want, and kind of work on those. So nothing really shocking in this view, but the shocking was that they all come with a paradox. So the more secure you are, the less you care about security. The more you want to do automation, after a while, you don't know anymore what the automation is about or where you were doing this. The more you care about measuring, 
the chances are you're measuring the wrong things. Uh, and the more you care about service, like a SaaS company that starts wants to solve, serve all customers. And when they grow big, they only serve the customers that bring in money. So there's kind of a paradox between the original idea and moving on. And with autonomy, you know, we're all talking about autonomous teams, and yet we're building shared platforms. So they're not autonomous. We're sharing, and yeah, this, this, again, I realize that every company still has a mixture of all these things. So a company is not in one state. At some part, they're still doing the command and control. At some part, they're still doing the other parts. And it will sh just sift around. So if you're you know, thinking about, hey, we're the saviors of the universe, DevOps, and we're coming in, go ahead and try to configure or kind of convince all these kind of different IDs. And it's just so hard. Um, not giving up, but it's, it's kind of, you know, the broader your view gets on this, the harder it is to kind of see whether you're making a good impact. While I'm going to make this uh, slide, um, people want to hire me for a dental job. This slide actually came from, they asked me to explain to marketing what DevOps is. And I go in and I tell them, oh, A works with B, and it's like, no, no, can you simplify this? Okay, I can reduce this to LinkedIn job titles that you need to look for, right? <laughs> and they're raving about this slide, and you know, well, now we know what to search, and, and I, I, think, I think it's okay, right? Um, if people ask me, oh, you know, do you want to do a DevOps job? I'm probably going to say no, because I know the idea is that you want me to manage your Kubernetes, and you're not talking about this collaboration part in, a, in, a, in that way. So I want to do both. But if I hear you say a DevOps job or an SRE, it's probably be build the shared platform. And there's nothing wrong with that, but building this more, really, it's okay, right? I, I don't care about it too much. Uh, but now complexity is on the rise, and we'll probably see this more and more in, in that kind of thing. So. It's, it's okay, right? We'll lift through it, we'll reduce up and down some of the complexity. It's a brave new world. Cloud native wasn't there before. The collaboration, autonomous teams wasn't there before. It's just gonna change. And it's okay. We can manage this. And coming back to my definition, whatever is a silo of friction, right? It doesn't matter whether it's complex or not, or whether you have a new tool or not. You know, the silos will be there. Like one of the things I'm noticing is that you go to a platform team, hey, something that you could use, and I say, we're not sure whether we, you know, we can have the developers kind of adopt these things. So they're they're shying away of even trying to talk to these teams whether they should need it, yes or no. So the silos are coming. It's okay. And you know, in that way, DevOps will be forever if you think about the friction. If it, you just reduce it to you know, the sea of engines before, uh, that's something else. And it's okay. New tools, it's okay. I'm okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, I struggled with this for a long time because you're like building this a little bit of, of a legacy and then you see like, is DevOps dead or not? But I fear, you know, it's okay. And you're okay, right? We're all okay, you know, look at us being back. Um, that's amazing. Uh, reflecting back, you know, hopefully getting some learnings. There's one thing, you know, before I kind of close off, um, they're not okay. Right. They're really struggling. As Ernest mentioned, they're doing this event, which is insane. I don't know if I would do it in that state, but you know, they're doing this, so please support them. So I guess DevOps is going to be okay. Thank you for listening.